Hey, Most Amazing Top 10 family, I'm your host, Trey Duran, and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. We are once again heading over to Maine. This place is definitely on my travel bucket list. I want to go anywhere that specializes in clam chowder. I could literally eat that creamy soup until my heart stopped, and they would have to bring me back to life with a shot of adrenaline. It is so good. What do people do who are allergic to clams? Just wait patiently to die because they have nothing to live for? Well, that's a question for or another video because today I'm going down the list of top 10 scary main urban legends part 2. If you have not seen part 1 you should go check that out right now because I think I did a pretty good job on the first video. And make sure you stick around until the end of this video because I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts which you guys love so much. If you want me to shout out your pet you can hit me up on Instagram. Also if any of you out there are feeling down and need a good laugh come check out Top 10 Central. This is our new comedy channel and it is hilarious. Myself and the amazing Jared Bronstein did a video on the Super Bowl and it was amazing. So guys, make sure you go check out the channel right now and without taking any longer, let's get into this list. At number 10, we have the Maiden Cliff. If you have a wardrobe malfunction, you would expect it to embarrass you or maybe show off your butt crack a little bit. You don't expect to die and become a restless ghost for the rest of time. Well, the legend of the Maiden Cliff is that it's haunted by a ghost of a woman who met her end because her hat blew off her head. She was standing near the edge of the cliff for a photo and then a huge gust of wind slapped her hat off her head and sent it flying away. But this hat cost good money so she wasn't going to let mother nature try and steal it away from her. She tried to catch her hat but she wasn't as quick and agile as she thought. She ended up losing her footing and falling all the way down to her death. Now it's said that her ghost walks around the cliff and has been seen in photos that people have taken of the cliff. Ghosts always have unfinished business and I definitely know that this ghost just wants its hat back. At number 9 we have Wessie. There was a monster spotted in a forest in Maine by several people who got the nickname Wessie. Someone reported to a policeman that there was a large snake like monster eating what might have been a beaver. Everyone thought it was a joke at first but when a couple more people came with the same story the police decided to go investigate. Then it's reported that one police officer did come across what seemed to be a 12 foot long anaconda, but in Maine. These are massive snakes that are normally found in the Amazon. How did this creature make its way out there and could it potentially attack a person? A crew of snake specialists went out in search of the snake to capture it and take it into a sanctuary, but the snake was never found. Maybe it was lost in the forest, maybe the unorthodox environment led to the snake's death, or maybe there was something supernatural happening and the long snake like creature wasn't a snake at all, but something a little bit more spooky. At number 8 we have the circus ship. Did you know that this used to be a thing? They would have a circus on a boat, on the water, everything powered by steam. That sounds like the drunken dream of a guy from 1901. Well, it was a real thing. There was a circus ship that set sail in 1836 named the Royal Tar that was packed with animals. There was horses, camels, birds, and even an elephant on board. They were planning to have some crazy times on this boat and they were putting on some pretty good shows for all the people on board. When the boat got off the coast of Maine, the weather took a turn for the worst and things started getting pretty brutal on board. The steam engine caught fire and the fire spread to the rest of the boat. They tried to save all the animals and every person on board, but they weren't able to. 32 people died on a circus boat that day, which sounds like something out of a Danny McBride script. Some people say that they can see the ghostly silhouette of the boat floating in the water on certain nights. At number 7 we have the ghost of an opera singer. I don't think you could create a more annoying ghost. The ghost of an opera singer seems like it would keep you up all night with a bunch of music you don't even know the words to. Like if you're gonna haunt me, could you at least sing some top 40 so I could sing along or something? The University of Maine famously is haunted by the ghost of an opera singer that has an auditorium named after her. As we have already covered, ghosts haunt something when they have unfinished business. But what more do you want in life? You have a massive building named after you. What you need to go for the Grammy now too? You had your chance when you were alive, stop being so greedy, go to bed, let me sleep. But it's the ghost of Lillian Nordica. It said when you are walking through the auditorium, you can hear her singing some opera hits. At number 6 we have the Maine State Prison. Show me someone who says they found a prison that isn't haunted and I will show you a liar. I think that prisons come pre-haunted. It goes into the concrete or something. Like the, the way they make the building, they just feed it with ghosts. But the Maine State Prison fits the common theme of 
prisons that have ghosts walking through the halls like it's some sort of ghoul convention. There have been reports of people feeling cold spots, disembodied voices, footsteps, and some inmates have even seen a dark figure walking around the halls and then disappearing into walls. Ooh. This is the kicker. Remember how I said every prison is destined to be haunted? You can't have a prison function without some sort of spectral activity. Well, apparently some of the equipment that was brought over to the main state prison before it opened was from another prison that was haunted and the ghosts followed the equipment to the new location. It was just meant to be. At number five, we have Bigfoot. If you're doing an urban legends list, you gotta throw this guy on. He just needs to be there. There have been Bigfoot sightings in Maine since 2012. People have seen the big ape man walking through the woods and have tried to snap some pictures of him, but as you all know, every time someone tries to take a picture of Bigfoot, they come out all blurry. But if we're really digging into the history of Bigfoot in Maine, it goes way back before 2012. The Native American tribes that used to call this area home have talked about a great ape man who would walk in the woods for nearly a thousand years. So Bigfoot might have been hiding out there, we just haven't been able to find him. As the old joke says, Bigfoot is the ultimate hide and seek champion. At number four we have the piano ghost. Here's something I've learned about ghosts. They love to play the piano. It's so easy for them. They just have to push down and the music comes out. They suck at wind instruments. They lack the lung power. You'll never see a ghost killing it on the saxophone. That doesn't exist. But there's a ghost that has found its home in the Booth Bay Opera House. There isn't a lot of information as to where this ghost might have come from. Some people think it could have been someone who had a heart attack while watching one of the performances in the Opera House. But that's not the part that matters. What matters is if you head upstairs to the second floor, you might see a piano play itself. Well, being played by a ghostly figure. I heard he takes requests though. For the number three spot, we have the Portland Prostitute Riots. Portland in Maine is a pretty quiet town, but there was a time when this place was filled with prostitutes and fires. Apparently back in the day, there was a bunch of brothels in the area and some people loved it. They thought it was a great addition to the neighborhood, while other people saw it as a sinful stain on the area and wanted to get rid of it. People complained to the city, but it was 1825, so there was no laws against people selling their bodies for a little coin. So the town folk took it into their own hands. They went from brothel to brothel and started to tear them down one by one until they got fed up with the hard work of tearing down a brothel and decided just to burn them to the ground. Legend says that the prostitutes were horrified by seeing their place of business get destroyed, so they fought back and ended up killing a man. At number two, we have the main mist. Now, no one knows which came first, the urban legend about the Maine Mist or the story from Stephen King, but they kind of fit around the same idea. The Mist in Maine has become legendary because it is so constant. It has also been a major cause for sailors crashing into shores and rocks. Now, because the Mist is so dense and boats end up getting destroyed while they're inside of it, it has started a legend that there is something that hides in the mist and takes people off their ships for itself. This isn't the only time we have connected monsters to the mist. It's said that Cthulhu travels in a great mist to remain unseen. And for the number one spot, we have the Pomola. This creature from Native American legend is said to be the protector of the tallest mountain in Maine and possesses great power. It has been described as a cross between a human and an eagle with a great wingspan and large horns like the kind a moose has. This thing is definitely a hodgepodge of animals and is in nearly impossible to get a look at. If you try to climb the mountain to try and get a look at it, it will get a sense of you before you get up there and will know you're coming. It will most likely fly away to a place where you can't see it. The legend goes even deeper and says if you are very persistent and try to find it, it will control the weather and create a storm to knock you off the mountain. Alright everyone, that is our list. Thank you all so much for tuning in and as promised, I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts which you guys love so much. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. I pick new pets every day, so if you don't get picked one day, you can message back another day. And without taking any longer, let's shout out some pets. First we have Cinder. Look at that little dude just hiding in a sink. That's so amazing. He's so cute. Then we have Jasmine. This lady is so shaggy, I love it a lot. After that we have Maverick. This guy looks so excited. It's like an action shot. You can tell it's like, ah. Next we have Pablo and Junior. These guys have all the bases covered. They have like opposite color schemes and everything. They have the perfect look. I love it. Then we got Tyson. I love this cute boy in his little sweater. He's so ready for the snow. And finally we have Cal L and Crash. They are a solid duo and I am happy to have them on the channel. All right everyone, that is our list. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Until next time, I've been your host, Chay Arena, and I need to go to Maine so I can get some clam chowder. I need it in my body. Bye. And without taking, so guys, make sure you go check out that, so guys, make, so guys, make sure you go check out the channel right now, Taken of the Cliff. Did you know that there used to be, did you know,
Did you know that you, did you know that this used to be a thing? You could go on a ride on a circus that